Welcome to Shots and Stitches from the Lucky Needle. On this episode of Shots and Stitches, John and Tony are finally back in the shop to work on the Coke and Barber chair. Grab a drink and find out what they've been up to in the past six months and tag along as they create and cut out custom patterns for the barber chair. Check out a few tools, tips, and tricks in Tony's garage, and of course, sharing some shots along the way. We hope you enjoy this episode. Cheers. Hey guys. Hey. We can maybe film another Shots and Stitches episode, or do you just want to sit around chatting all day? It's, um, it's been a hot minute, so... Yeah, it's, it's been a it's, while. It's, I think it's time. I think it's time to film yeah. another one. We're warming up. Yeah, we're warming up. <laughs> Welcome to Shots and Stitches episode four, I think, right? Yeah. Sorry it's taking so long. Um, I know I say that a lot on these videos, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Both of our lives have been extremely hectic the last, uh, fuck, it's been six months, I think, since we filmed one of these episodes. It's been six months? Yeah. Short story for me is I've been, the shop is still a complete disaster. Nothing really is moving forward. I've gone through like four or five contractors now. Uh, and so I decided I needed to make money and go back to work in racing. So I took a lot of jobs there and I've been on the road like three weeks out of the month and then when I'm home I'm working on maintaining the house and I just haven't even had time to pick up a camera and Tony's been going through similar shit where life just came up. Well you know originally when Shay and I moved down here um, the idea was to get a couple rental properties um, you know as part of the, the grand retirement plan well, you know, the ones we could afford obviously needed some work, so been working on those as well as having a full time job and you know, it's and then trying to keep up, you know, the property here. You know, I'm yeah. not used I mean, you know, we're from California. We're not used to having acreage. We don't <laughs> Yeah, you know it's I a mean, lot of work. Is, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, you know. All I can say is thank God we didn't get ten acres, we got one acre because, you know, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be sitting here filming right now. I'd be be out there mowing the yard. So sorry, you, yeah. know, you know, the sad part is John and I have all these great ideas about all this different stuff we want to do and then... And unfortunately, you, like everybody else, we got to make money too. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't our primary yeah. income. So. Got to pay the bills, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I haven't had Anyways, any Redmont yeah, in a while. Redmont so. in a while. Yeah, shameless plug. Here we go for Redmont. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Last we left off, we were working on uh, planning out the diamonds and right. everything, so I think we're going to yep. do some stitching and stuff. All right, we better head over to the actual yeah, shop the actual, where the barber chair is, yeah. and we got to go yell at Clyde because he's fucking with your chickens. Yeah. Oh, he's falsely accused, John. Oh, where did he go? Be nice. You're, you're not a blood, you're not a bird dog anymore. Hey, As we left it. Holy shit. So I have this idea for the, for the Volkswagen. Um, for the future Lucky Needle project that, uh, if we ever get to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. My mom tells stories of back in Germany that they would go camping in these things. Her whole family, so it was her, her parents, and her brother, and his wife. So what does that make? Five people in this thing with all the camp gear and all that stuff. And, you know, there's, there's great vintage uh, camping pictures, you know, and, of people doing it. And they got their, their you know, their slacks on yeah, and their yeah. tie and stuff, you know. <laughs> But I had this idea for it, because this is an original VW uh, roof rack. It's not a reproduction. But I had this idea for making this, uh, um, it's like a canopy that comes off, right? Mm. And it would be really simple, okay? So it would be just a pole that goes through here that feeds through the here, six feet long, six feet out this way. So three poles, and they have to do like the, the flag poles screw together to shorten them down so you can store it, right? So there'd be one pole here, and then two poles 
out here with the canopy yeah, yeah. sewn, you know, and then you just use the strings, old school style. And you have a little spot. To and then you have a spot to sit. Coffee yeah, and because, you know, you could, like, this actually, okay, of course it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an original six volt espresso machine that plugs into your cigarette lighter. Is that the coolest thing ever? Wait, this this plugs into the cigarette lighter, into, yeah, and then you yeah. put your coffee in there. You put your there. coffee in there, <laughs> and it percolates. So anyway, so then you can sit there with your vintage camp chairs. So you got the little vintage chairs. I got the vintage. Let's save some of that. For okay. That episode. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, I get a little excited about this stuff. Here's the book that Tony was picking fabric out oh, yeah. of for the Look top it. he's talking about. Which one is it? I think it was this one right here. Yeah. No, it was this yeah. one. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. So that's the one with the stripes coming perpendicular to the car. Okay. With the fringe. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the last video, we were talking about lining all that stuff up, right? Yeah. So I can see I already forgot something from the last episode, so we need to number our panels. Okay. We got to... That way we know which how to sew them up. Yeah, and we still have the old cover. Right? So that, that's for the back. Yeah, that's yeah. for this, right? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be one piece with a bunch of diamonds. Right. So then we're going to have to sew these guys to make it all one piece. So what I like to do is just go one, one. That way, when you transfer it to your pattern, you know what piece. Right. Right. You need to sew it to, and then two, two. Obviously, we're going to have the zippers here. We're going to do all that first. So this is just going to be the next step. Just, zippers are the thing I'm kind of light on. You know, yeah. I, I always kind of just ham hoed them together and hope for the best. But So I'm excited to see how they do it correctly. And yeah, I think everybody does that. Oh, really? You just ham yeah. But at least this is going to give us some clues wow. with our patterns. You know, Because the more, the more marks and the more references you give mm -hmm. yourself, because I run into that shit all the time where it's like I've got a whole boat busted apart and I'm like, oh, looking for, okay, where's number four or right, that, you right. know, like trying right. to figure it out. And the, so the more clues you can give yourself, the better. So then after that, we'll sew the plate to the, this is what's called a plate. Oh, the, the front's the plate. Okay. The whole front, right? Okay. So, uh, the, the design part like this, how we're segregating that, this piece is called the insert. Okay. And then these are called the collars, and that goes for the same on the cushion and the backrest. So this is the, the insert, this is the collars, and then when you put them together, that's your plate. Okay. That's, at least that's a post lingo. All right. From how I was taught in school. <laughs> this is actually called the boxing. The okay. side piece on any anything you're making, the siding is called the boxing. So we're gonna sew the plate to the boxing. So that's why I'll put a five here and a five there. And then after that, we're gonna sew the back, mm -hmm. which on a lot of there's I, I just call it the back because on a lot of automotive stuff there is no back. It's like a piece of plastic that right, right, goes right. behind or something. So. We'll call that number six. So we'll go to six. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take plastic patterns out of all these shapes that we made, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's going to be our cover. Okay. And, that'll, and all these alignment marks will allow us to understand that we're in line as we're sewing them all right, together. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to sew up a taco. I've done that before with a oh. box cushion, you know. Yeah, or you end up with a bunch of excess material at the, at the end, end, and you're like trying to shove it yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying it's, to shorten it. It's yeah. got wrinkles like a motherfucker. <laughs> like, I've whatever, it. it's on the back. It'll yeah, be yeah, fine. Yeah. Sew that, put yeah. that zipper in yeah. there. Yeah. So this is going to be our actual pattern then. Yeah. Okay. And the good thing about this stuff is like if you're ever doing multiple of the same pattern, you can keep using it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, we'll do this front bit here first. As we talked about in the last video, what we're going to do is use this super cheap from Albright Supply. 
uh, foam and fabric spray adhesive. I call this temp tack because I only ever use it for temporary stuff. Brilliant, man. That's awesome. All right, you got some scissors? Yeah. Right, right next to you, right there. My handy dandy home built scissor Damn. holder. Looks pretty nice. Are these the best scissors you got? Yeah, right now, All yeah. Right, I'm going to get you some better <laughs> ones. <laughs> I got some good German ones in, in the I house. I have some at the house. <laughs> Wait, those aren't good? Those are good? I mean, these are, these are good, but I got better ones. For okay, you. well, I'm. <laughs> Thank you, Albrecht. Good scissors are key. But see how you know well that holds. Yeah, that's really. But on then there. look, I can, I right, can take right. it back off, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't tear it anything up. Them too? It's not. Yeah. Nice. Tax right. Yeah, that's why I call it Tim Tac because yeah. it's. Yeah. Sorry, Albrights. It's good glue, but it's so <laughs> cheap that it <laughs> works like this. That's the difference between the real and the ideal right yeah. there. Because if you really want it, in my opinion, spray can glue, you only use it for this. Right. If you want it to be real, you use a spray gun with right. contact cement, the same like you would yeah, yeah. in cabinets. Yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. This is what's, we're calling this efficient. If there's one thing you can do in your life, you should be efficient. We're gonna make three patterns out of this one piece because we got this one and then we got these two patterns. Just gonna hold it taut. I'm just gonna mark out that seam. And now you might be super worried that my marks are a little bit crooked, but because the fabric has a lot of stretch, it is gonna find its kind of natural equilibrium. So as long as you're not doing something like really shit like that, you're gonna be fine. Cause it, once you put the tension on the seam, it's all gonna straighten out pretty nice. So that's what we're doing here. And that's why I don't worry too much about being mega precise on this. I mean, this does need to be precise. I guess my definition, cause I've also done machine work is mega precise is a little different, but Anyway, so see here now how we're having trouble getting all this to lay flat. What we're going to do is come in here and give ourselves a few little snippy snips. See now how, how nicely that'll come around there. So we're going to just go... And this is why we draw it on the cushion so that we know, because remember how we use the straight edge to make everything straight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know it's straight already. See how nicely that'll fold down now? And that's okay if there's a little bit of wiggles in here, because when, when uh, I'll show you when we go to cut this out, we will just make it nice and curved and even, right? So. There's a little bit of wiggles in there. You can see that. Mm -hmm. But we know that's the general shape that it needs to take. So you can even come in and correct it. Just come back and Leonardo it. Because here's the thing, is the fabric has some stretch and everything to it. So you got some leeway. But you don't want to plan your entire design around that. Because then when you need it, you don't got any more. It screws you. Yeah. Yeah. So that That's just teensy, teensy little bit of like that. Yeah. When you bring it up here, you make it nice and smooth. You'll do the same thing on this piece. And then because we're going to add the foam on the back of this piece and that piece, it's going to fill all that in. Yeah. Now we got the outside of our template all done up. So then what we're gonna come in here and do, mark all our alignment marks.
All right, so then you mark it two, two, one, one. And the, the reason why I like to be this precise is because sometimes you you take the patterns and then you get another job or you get called to go do a woodworking job mm. or you get called to go racing or something and you have your patterns and if they're not numbered oh yeah you're trying to reconstruct a wheel or reinvent yeah the wheel then what do you point. do yeah. so you need to give yourself as much clues as possible especially in case something happens mm. we know that these are the three pieces we need to sew together first and then then we just follow the numbers again, right? Mm -hmm. Three, three. So that means we need to sew the boxing up on its own. And then, once we're done with that, five and five, five and five, we need to sew that to this entire piece. Mm -hmm. And then the same with the backrest, six and six. So I remember we talked about whether yeah. or not we were going to do this insert as two, so, actually sew it up as two pieces or sew it as a longer piece and then cut it. I don't, I don't we talked. I think we decided we're gonna try and calculate it so that the diamonds, when it's this thing is sitting up, the both points meet each other okay. on the back. Rest, okay. Which is a a lot more work. Get it. But it looks fucking awesome when you nail yeah, it. Right. So. Well, it's one of those things that you you uh, you don't really notice when it's right yeah but you do notice when it's wrong yeah 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 you know what i well, mean it's, and like, honestly it's only for people like us that know what they're like looking at yeah because yeah. like if you ne watch after i show you this and everybody on camera after i show you this you're gonna notice other interiors with diamonds and you're gonna be like oh it doesn't line up there and there oh and it doesn't line up there and there and then it's gonna drive you nuts so then you ha have to do it right all right, anyway. so in the last episode, we offered up a free hat to anybody who could tell us what the this, this is. tool was. Because neither one of us knew it, and Tony bought it. And he bought it. I bought the lock. It was a lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically so lock. we knew it was something for upholstery, but we had no idea what it was. And one of our viewers, Nikolaus Woodruff, Nikolaus Woodruff, he, he said, what it was. the tool at the end of the video looks like a clinch it tool used to attach coil springs to burlap or jute wedding. So, let me let me do a little Google check and make sure you're right. Clinch it tool. That's that it. Looks, that looks about like it, doesn't it? How much is it? How much was it? Fuck. $379. <laughs> What'd you pay for that? I, I was part of the lot. So it says, clinch it tool increases production by eliminating the need to sew oh. springs to the web, the base. web base. Looks like Nikolaus, you are are the winner of uh, of the hat um, for for, for <laughs> letting you. us know yeah. what the hell that thing was. Thank you for teaching whether or not us. I'll ever use it. Maybe you can actually uh, let us know where to get the fasteners for it. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> up until about three minutes ago, I didn't know it needed fasteners. <laughs> So anyway, if you can let us know, that'd be awesome. And you got a hat coming. So uh, Tony, did you notice my new shirt? I did. I did. And allegedly, I had one too. Yeah. Well, it's somewhere. Yeah. It said something else on the back, didn't it? Yeah. Should yeah. I, yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and we can't take credit for that one. No. Right. This That's is from our favorite show, Letter Kenny. I did find my long but sleeve, then. but I'm definitely not man enough to be wearing this long sleeve today uh, <laughs> out here because I might pass out in front of all you people. But anyway, so this is our long sleeve one. And, and this Tony is, came up with this line. Yeah, we were, we were, uh, how many sheets to the wind we were in the pool, we came up, we came up with this line. <laughs> so those are the new Shots and Stitches shirts. If Say anybody, that five times. Yeah. <laughs> So those are the new Shots and Stitches <laughs> shirts. If anybody wants one, contact Casey. Are they? I don't. Are they They're even on our up? YouTube they store. are up on the YouTube store, cool. I guess. But if you want a free shirt, be the first one to tell me what the hell this thing is in Tony's garage. You gotta show them the other side. Does that give away too much? It's a, no, it's a hint. It's a hint. Go ahead, show the other side. Here's the other side. <laughs> Year, make, model, everything. <laughs> now what we can do is finish up the 
all the rest of the patterns. Basically, Bill and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sweat it. Don't Cameraman sweat it. spilled some yeah, beer. That's why we have another towel. <laughs> now what we're gonna do? That smells legit over here. Sorry. Is we're gonna take the rest of the patterns, but we're gonna cut out each of these pieces, and that's gonna allow us to make our actual pieces. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So Casey pointed out that we need to check our workmanship on this. Uh, on our, our wood glue fix over here. I'm almost 100% sure this is going to work. Like 98%. You're a cabinet maker, you know it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, that's not going to reflect well on me. Anyway, so. Blue tape is your friend. Look at that! Give me some pliers, give me some pliers! No, it's going to be fine. Bing. Yeah, no, it's perfect. Yeah. We're good, we're good to go. Good for another 75 okay, so years. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. And like I said, if you guys, before in the previous video, you see all this glue right here. If you're staining this, make sure to get all that off because it seals the grain. And the stain doesn't soak And the stain in. will just float over the top. And then when you go to wipe it, it'll just wipe it right off and you'll have a big old halo right there. So make sure to get that off. Even if you go to sand it afterwards, because it's still impregnated the, the, the grain, it'll still leave a halo. So really? that's why you gotta wipe it off. Wipe it off. Yeah. With water? Or what do you wipe it yeah, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's all water based, so just make sure you wipe it off. How do you want to do the bottom? All one piece. Okay. Like all one pattern. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. That's perfect. Come on, oh, man. That's I can't much. help it. I can't help it. That's perfect. I want it to stick, man. I know. It's not nice. supposed to stick. You said it was cheap shit. You gotta so be quick on the trigger. Use more, man. Quick on the trigger. You gotta use more of it. Shit. You gotta use the least amount possible so you can stretch the stretch the money. Make sure that I did it right around the corners and Ooh, I see something I missed already. Looks good to me. Why not? Yeah. Except for my overspraying. Don't look don't yeah, look. You spray too much. Don't it's look. gonna rip the foam man. Oh well a little bit. <laughs> This is why you don't spray too much. <laughs> Cayete! <laughs> Look at that, John. Center of line. Center of line, baby. So I think that's it. Yeah. We're done What's with the next? patterns and we'll be ready to start making the cover. But honestly, Tony, I'm getting a little buzzed. It's damn near close to bedtime. As you know, as tradesmen, you never get as much work done in a day never. as you thought so. Never. No. But uh, we also only allow ourselves a couple of hours to work on this. Yeah, so yeah. I think maybe we we call this good. In the next episode, we'll give some good treats. Yeah. About sewing diamonds and all that. I think before we end, we should go have another shot and a beer. Yeah. We can change your and, partially uh, buzzed to really buzzed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. It's a good batch, by the way. Oh yeah, Tony. How do you know when it's a good batch? <laughs> Should we talk about that? Yeah. Ew. So <laughs> I think she's already filming. Huh? I Is am. she filming? Yes. So if you haven't already noticed, we drink Miller High Life around here. And uh, partly because it's a family tradition and partly because it just damn tastes good. Now, the <laughs> only problem with Miller is, Miller High Life, um, is and we haven't quite figured it out, right, John? Whether it's the clear glass or well, what the story is. I think the clear is. glass is the, the original issue yeah it depends yeah. how you store the clear glass after that right yes something well, like that you know even though it's in the sealed box we don't know but miller's quality control is a little questionable so <laughs> so every now and then you get a good batch and then you get a not so good batch so the way to tell is you take a little sip
You got to do a little Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> yeah, that's a good batch. It's a good batch. <laughs> yeah. You got to make a little sound. Do you hear it in your head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah, the yeah, cartoon, you, could, yeah. you need the oxygen. You actually need the <laughs> oxidation from the oxygen to really kind of give it, give a taste for it. John, how much? And then we need some for our off-cam celebrity over there. Look at the frost. Well, all right, guys. Frost. Cheers to the shots, and uh, I'm only gonna drink half. I want to keep talking. You know, we don't mean to keep dragging this series out, but like as we said earlier, it just, we only have so much time to film these and it was more about bullshitting and shop talk than actually getting work done in this whole series. So that's what we do. That's what we're gonna keep doing. Yeah. You know, Hopefully you guys enjoy it, you know? And like, that's that's the whole reason why we're building shops, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. said. Well, to, well, half of the, you know, half of the joy of building a shop is this i mean you sit around you have a drink you bullshit you build something you know i mean yeah. unfortunately our first project was pretty i mean that thing is pretty in debt right i mean there's a I lot of things going on you got, we were getting into yeah you got you got yeah. you got mechanical you got laminate you got fabric Rusts, you know i mean you yes you know i mean hydraulics right yeah. you know? <laughs> i mean because you know during the filming of this, we always come up with you know three more episodes of some other shit we want to do. Yeah. You know, but we gotta we gotta get through this one first. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, so. And I think it's gonna be cool because that whole pattern thing I think is really useful. Yeah. I'd never thought about doing it like that before because let me tell you, if you think that's labor intensive, try standing there with that little stitch thing, taking like oh, a I cover know. apart. I know. You know, I mean, the yeah. time it takes that you know trying to cut the threads and separate yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. I mean. It's a nightmare, you know, so... And then yeah. half the time the pattern is all yeah. wibbly-wobbly. Yeah, it, yeah, it's stretched because, you know, yeah. you know, somebody was sitting on it in the wrong way. And anyway, so yeah, it's... Uh, Maybe one day I'll show you my quick trick around doing all that, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all about good tricks. It's all about tricks. Yeah. So, but anyways, anyways. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Make sure you follow, subscribe, like the video. Check out our website, theluckyneedle.com, where there's plenty of actual instructional videos on there <laughs> <laughs> that, that are for sale. And that's actually what <laughs> helps me make these fun videos. So make sure you check that out. Thanks, guys.